Visiting local markets while travelling is a truly wonderful way to immerse yourself into the vibrant culture and diverse flavours of a destination. Whether you're exploring the bustling streets of Marrakesh, strolling through the colourful markets of Bangkok, or browsing the farmer's stalls in a charming European village, local markets offer a glimpse into the heart and soul of a place. On today's show, Themis explores a Royal Caribbean cruise. Candace Dixon shows us the Shell Harbour on the New South Wales coast. And I'm here at the Adelaide Central Market to immerse myself in the wonders of cheese. But first, Callum visits a restaurant that's doing incredible things. Kane Pollard, a visionary chef and restaurateur, has made a name for himself with his captivating restaurant called Topery. Located in the foothills of South Australia, Topery stands out as a culinary gem, offering a truly unique experience. Let's delve into the story of Kane Pollard and his remarkable restaurant. After working in kitchens and for restaurateurs over the years, um, I feel like I learnt a lot about how I wanted to run a kitchen and how I didn't want to run a kitchen. I felt to have full creative control was going to be the only way that I could move forward in my career. So the opportunity came up for a, a position here at the Topri Cafe. Uh, so I came on board as head chef and about a year and a half later the owners of the, the nursery and the cafe were, were keen to sell and we yeah, came on board and just slowly started to transition it from, from a simple cafe to slightly more restaurant style offering. It is an old home, it's a 140 year old home and I think from a service perspective we try and really have that welcome to our home type vibe when you, when you walk through the doors. What sets Topri apart is Kane's approach to cuisine. It's all about locally sourced and seasonal ingredients. South Australia's rich agricultural landscape provides a bountiful selection of fresh produce, which Kane carefully incorporates into his culinary creations. I grew up in the Adelaide Hills. Our after school play involved trailing the creeks and playing hide and seek in the fennel bushes and picking blackberries during summer, finding the biggest quartz stones that we could in the forest. Now when you look back, on, on that time spent outdoors and those flavours and smells and textures that you're sort of absorbing as a human being. I found that's what impacts predominantly how food comes together in my mind. Kane, I'm super excited to learn about a new concept place. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, so we're going to be setting up unique dining experiences um, exactly where they should be. We're going to be taking the, the guests from town up to the forest and serving a, a menu that is inspired by the place with matched beverages and to create food memories and, and that sense of place moment that we all love. But how did you come up with this idea? Because being in a restaurant kitchen is one thing. Trying to cook in the middle of a forest and serve guests, that's a whole nother level. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we've, we've owned Topri for 11 years now and I think every day we've been trying to create that sense of place style of dining within our walls. Um, and I've just been asking myself this same question over the past few years, how can we take it further, how can we take it further? And the answer always comes back to taking the, the diner or the guest to the actual place of origin of where those ingredients came from and, and creating that same feeling that I get when I pick the ingredients and come up with an idea um, by putting that on a plate and, and serving it to the guest in that space. And just feeling the vibe of what's going on around us is, is what drives the menu. Um, so it could be completely different 
style every single time. Well, it certainly sounds like a pretty incredible experience, mate. How do I get involved? So jump on our socials or on our website, join the mailing list, and we're looking to hold one every six weeks, and it will jump from the, the forest to the coast to the riverland to the hills, um, and it will just keep on going like a, like a never-ending series. Caden Pollard really is a visionary, and visiting Topiary is an experience that is memorable and exceptional. As a foodie, I'm so excited about Kane's latest venture, Place. The idea of a roaming restaurant where everything's sourced from the surrounding area sounds to me just perfect. A beach holiday in winter? Not something you've thought about? Well, Shell Harbour on the New South Wales coast is gorgeous all year round. A beach holiday in winter is something most of us usually avoid. But this gorgeous seaside town is fantastic all year round. Shell Harbour is absolute paradise with pristine beaches and bays and it's under two hours drive south of Sydney. And right now it's the perfect time to experience one of the world's most incredible animal migrations. Hello, Hi. welcome aboard. From May to November, Shell Harbour is a prime spot to witness hundreds of humpback whales as they make their way north to warmer waters. And taking me out on the high seas is Shell Harbour Wild. Why is Shell Harbour such a beautiful place to whale watch? Um, well, we've got an array of wildlife. We've got the seal colony um, out there at the Five Islands. We have the dolphins that constantly cruise the coastline here. A beautiful escarpment to turn back and look at. It is an absolute fantastic place to get out on the water. Not far into the trip, dolphins begin to appear alongside our boat. Lounging on a rocky outcrop are the pups of the sea. But there is nothing quite like spotting a whale in the wild. One of the most awe-inspiring experiences in the natural world. <laughs> Shell Harbour Wild Tours operate out of the brand new Shell Harbour Marina with world-class boating facilities, a netted beach perfect for little ones, plus some fantastic new eateries. And the jewel in the new marina's crown is the waterfront tavern at Shell Cove. This stylish, open-air dining space features two bars, a cabinet laden with delicious seafood, and a dedicated sushi bar where they slice fresh to order. Shell Harbour's coastline is spectacular. But there's so much more to this town than just great beaches. Haas Aviation Museum at Shell Harbour Regional Airport houses an incredible collection of airliners and aviation history. The collection is fascinating. You can climb aboard many of the planes, experience being a pilot on a cockpit tour, and out on the tarmac, you can have the best tour of all. This is our 747. What a beast! This is so high. Yep. Shell Harbour is a place to make memories. And for an unforgettable stay, Ravensthorpe Estate in Albion Park ticks all the boxes. Jared, this is a stunning property and it's got a fascinating history, doesn't it? It does, and welcome, Candice. It was built in 1890s by the Bateman family. They were the first physicians in the area and we actually hosted our first wedding in 1907. It must be the perfect spot for a wedding, but can you also just come as a couple or with your family? Yeah, of course. So you can rent out the whole property. So the whole three and a half acres you can rent out. It sleeps up to 18 guests. So we have the manor house, which sleeps 14 guests. So it's perfect for your family. We also have the Bateman's cottage, which is a nice suite so it's the old bridal suite we also have the stables whether you're a nature lover foodie or a history buff Shell Harbour is the perfect holiday for any season take a good look around you are not going to believe where I am would you believe that I'm on a cruise ship forget the cliche of unexciting slow days snoozing around on sun lounges for action lovers this is a slam dunk Right now, we're on the Ovation of the Seas as part of uh, Royal Caribbean's quantum class of ships, the most technologically advanced ships in the world. And uh, this is actually the largest ship ever to sail out of Sydney, Australia. 
Uh, 4,500 guests, 16 decks, uh, everything from uh, your relaxation, your great entertainment, your great food, uh, all kinds of activities for guests, no matter what you want to do, no matter how little or much you want to do, there's something for everybody on board. There are a few misconceptions about cruises, and the main one being is that they're boring. Well, a lot has changed, and cruise ships have now become just as much of a destination as the ports they dock in. There's well, the food that absolutely can go around the world. You can start uh, in France on our La Patisserie and get your uh, real French croissants and all your French pastries right there as well. Uh, as far as our specialty dining goes, we have Jamie's Italian, world famous uh, Jamie's, uh, Jamie Oliver, of course. Uh, the chef has got his very own uh, Italian restaurant on board the ship. We always say you come hungry, leave hefty inside of Jamie's. Uh, we've got Wonderland. If you love to take pictures of your food, there's more, no more imaginative place than Wonderland. Those are just some of the restaurants. So there's all kinds of bars for everybody. I, when I came to Australia, I know that the folks in Australia love their bars. So we've got them all right from an Irish pub on deck four with great live entertainment and of course very entertaining uh, bartenders who take care of you there. We have our schooner bar on board, famous throughout all the Royal Caribbean ships. That's your piano bar. We've also got where we are right now, Vintages. This is our wine bar on board. You can taste wines from all over the world, uh, great champagnes. We've also got sommeliers who can help you do wine pairings and wine tastings. And then of course we've got uh, all kinds of fun at a very exclusive bar. One of the first ones in the world is called the Bionic bar and this doesn't actually have any live bartenders it has two robots they're named maker and shaker small talk's not really his thing but he makes a mean cocktail one green lagoon please bartender cheers yum you've been working here long The Ovation of the Seas offers four types of accommodation. Interior state rooms that are great for the whole family. The ocean view that offers views of the sea and shore. The balcony state room which speaks for itself with dreamy views just outside your door. And the virtual balcony state rooms which deliver virtual real time floor to ceiling views. Well, the Ovation of the Seas has live entertainment for you every night of your cruise. Two full theater casts and two full theater productions. Literally something for everybody to keep you busy every night. You can see different entertainment every single night of your cruise. Now, if you want to break from all of the action, there are plenty of places for kicking back too. Well, that's the one nice thing about this ship. You can do as much or as little as you like. So depending on what your style of a great vacation is, we've got something for everybody. If you want to relax, we have our adults only solarium. Absolutely breathtaking views right off the front of the ship. We've got our main pool area if you want to get some sun. We also have a covered pool if it happens to get inclement weather. There's whirlpools around the ship. We have a full fitness center for people to enjoy and relax. You can get massaged, pampered, taken care of. Or you can just lie out on any one of the open decks, uh, catch some rays, have a nap, read a book, whatever you like. I hope I've proven to you that cruising isn't just for people chasing the quiet life. I'm exhausted. I'm going to need a holiday after this. Isn't it great when you book a holiday and are suddenly surrounded by experts with lots of advice? Well, let's talk to an actual expert to debunk some of those travel myths. Travel myth one. Taking your bank card is the easiest and cheapest way to use your money while overseas. That's not true. It's often one of the biggest misconceptions about travelling overseas. Often using your bank card will incur a lot of additional charges such as foreign transaction fees and overseas withdrawal fees, so it can add up to a lot of extra money out of your pocket. What we do recommend as an alternative is to get a foreign transaction card, which you can get from any sort of foreign currency exchange. They generally eliminate a lot of the extra fees and there's no charge for overseas purchases. Travel myth two, purchasing beverage and Wi-Fi packages before your cruise isn't worth it. False. It does actually work out better off to do that in advance before you leave. You can do that online or through your travel agent. Um, and what you'll actually find is that it is priced in AUD rather than in USD, which is what it will be on board the ship. Don't bother pre-booking your tours and stuff. She'll be right. This one couldn't be further from the truth. It is definitely recommended to be pre-booking as much as you can before you leave. 
Reason being is that post-COVID, we are finding a big influx of people in especially the major cities and a lot of the attractions like Anne Frank's house and the Vatican will book out months in advance. And finally, should you buy a SIM card for your phone? This one really depends on your preference. So you will find that a lot of the network providers now have deals that you can use, five or ten dollars a day, so we do recommend that you check with them. There is also Wi-Fi worldwide that you can tap into if you're just wanting to check Facebook or Messenger, um, but you can definitely still get travel SIMs if that's your preference. Thank you, Claire, for the clarification. One thing I enjoy more than a good glass of champagne in the evenings is a good glass of champagne with cheese. Thank you. Located in the Adelaide Central Market is the Smelly Cheese Shop. It is a haven for cheese enthusiasts, offering a wide variety of artisanal cheeses from around the world. With its distinct aroma and diverse selection, the Smelly Cheese Shop is the go-to destination for cheese lovers in the region. I came here because I fell in love with an Australian man who said, uh, how would you like to come and live in Adelaide? I was coming from Paris, I was living there. Adelaide seemed like a dream city, except for the cheese offer. And I went back to my hometown and tried to get the cheese I really wanted here in my new home. So the Smelly Cheese was a project that started in 2001. And it's really uh, developed very organically. And this shop is really a window to producers wherever they are in the world. Beyond the counter, the Smelly Cheese Shop often hosts cheese tastings, workshops and events to help educate and entertain cheese enthusiasts. Cheese After Dark was a project that we developed a long time ago. When we talk about specialty cheese, it can be intimidating and we didn't want people to be intimidated. We want people to have pleasure, so let's not make it too complicated. The Bastille Day Cheese After Dark is always my favourite. You see usually lots of music, singers, dancing, a bit of theatrical. We encourage people to check us online. All our events are online and you can book through Eventbrite. So Valerie, when you come to Cheese After Dark, you obviously learn a lot about French cheese. Cheese is a good way to, to learn your French history. Mm -hmm. Brie uh, was very famous in Paris, yep. so the king of the time always had access to uh, those cheeses. And Louis XVI, when it uh, was time for him to run away from mm -hmm. the angry uh, Parisian mob, they went from Paris and Louis XVI famously said stop, and he stopped at the inn to buy his Brie and he wanted to leave, but only at the condition that he could stock up a few brie. Priorities. And he's been arrested in that inn. So the brie cost oh. Louis XVI his head. How about that? That's a fascinating story. <laughs> Do you know, Kelly, there's another uh, fact that I think is fascinating, but you know we are all addicted yes, to cheese. I am. And the reason is, in the cheese, there is a little chemical called casomorphine. Morphine, as you know, yeah. is the little chemical that's going to help you release dopamine, mm. the happy hormone. Yeah. So if you're a little bluesy, you go to the cheese cabinet and you just get a little bit of cheese. cheese. I'm sure a little champagne with the cheese Absolutely. will help you naturally. I like that. I'm taking that on board. Valerie's cheese events are much sought after, so if you'd like to go, like she just said, you must book. Jump on their website for details. Well, that's our show for today. I hope we've inspired you to get out there.